Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. To the honorable judges, the timekeeper, my fellow friends, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this world would never exist without His Almightiness, the God of our friends of death, to the best of the universe. Thanks to Him and praises to Him for all the things He has granted to us. And may we not forget our salawat and salam to our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, along with his families and his fellow followers until the end of time. Ladies and gentlemen, in this happy and blessed moment, we are gathered in this lovely place, where, in the next few minutes, I would like to share my perspective about the role of Islamic students, the Islamic youth in developing Indonesia. To begin with, I'd like to ask all of you first, do you know General Sudirman? Have you ever heard of Imam Bonjo? What about Bung Salmo? Who are they actually? Yes, you're right. They were the heroes of Indonesia. And for your information, they were Islamic students. Brothers and sisters, what comes to your mind when you hear the word Islamic student? Are they the people who only learn about Islam? Or maybe the people whose activities are just reading books, memorizing Quran and praying? Or the people who live in a humble place and work hard to fulfill their needs? No, those are wrong perspectives. Islamic students are the people who learn more about Islam and implement it in their daily life. So they can make this world better than before. Ladies and gentlemen, I am an Islamic student. Before I became an Islamic student, many people said that, I'm sorry, I could be a homosexual by being an Islamic student because I live in a place where I'm surrounded by men, no women at all. They also said that I could become, I could be claimed as a terrorist because many Muslims nowadays are claimed as terrorists. But after I registered to an Islamic boarding school and became an Islamic student, I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very much because in there, I am taught how to be a good Muslim. I am taught how to live in a simple way. I am taught how to interact with other people nicely. And I am taught how to be the leader of this country. It shows that the Islamic students are really taught to be the agent of change, who can lead this country to its glory based on Islamic rules. Brothers and sisters, we know that the country which has the biggest Muslim population is Indonesia. It is stated that the biggest Muslim population is about 85% from the total of 257.9 million Indonesians. This huge number should be able to make this country become a great Islamic country. But, unfortunately, we can see the facts that are happening now. Robberies are happening everywhere, and most of the robbers are Muslims. Many innocent girls are being raped, and most of the rapers are Muslim. But remember, ladies and gentlemen, those Muslims who do those horrible actions are the Muslims who never learn about Islam. They only get their status as a Muslim because they were born from Muslim parents. Those people are only destroying the good name of Islam and only becoming the citizen's trash. They never read the Quran and understand the meanings. So, they do whatever they want without thinking of the impact to themselves, to the nation, and to the religion. Ladies and gentlemen, Indonesia, we need we need someone who can change this whole situation that is happening in this global nation. We need someone who can raise the good name of Islam in the eyes of the world. We need someone who can be the role model for all Muslims so that people will know how good Islam is. Ladies and gentlemen, so who else is going to be the person I have just mentioned other than Islamic students? We are the only one who can bring this country to its glory based on Islamic rules because we have been taught about Islam and how to manage something perfectly and rule someone strictly. And the question is, what can we as Islamic students do to develop this country? Here are some ways that thing can do. First, learn more about Islam. Read Al-Quran and Sunnah more, because the guidance for every Muslim are the Al-Quran and the Sunnah. Therefore, the characteristics of a true Muslim will be built in our soul. And we, can become a greater Muslim. Second, implement all the teachings that we have learned in the Islamic boarding schools in every aspect of life. Teach the citizens about Islam and show them the attitude of Rasulullah since he is the best man ever created. Through this way, people will understand that Islam is bring happiness, peace and mercy and not violence nor war. Last but not least, after we have understood Islam perfectly, 
and we have shown to the people how Islam teaches us to live in the right way, we have to go to the next level, which is leading people to the right way. We have to be the leader in every aspect of life, especially the leader of this country. Because only through this way, we can make this beloved nation to be a great Islamic civilization that is feared by all its enemies. Brothers and sisters, remember, nothing will be changed until someone changes something. As what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated in the Holy Quran. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Inna allaha luyubayyiruma bi kawmin hatta yuwayyiruma bi anfusihim. Which means, verily, Allah will not change the situation of one tribe until they change their situation by themselves. Quran Surah Ar-Ra'du, verse 11. Brothers and sisters, without Imam Bonjol, nobody, I really mean nobody, would stand against Dutch policies. Without Buntomo, the Indonesia will never get the spirit and bravery to fight against the Dutch. Without General Sudirman, the Indonesians will never be able to wipe the Dutch out of this country. And without Islamic students, the Islamic youth, Indonesia, will never be the Indonesia that we must be. This country is the responsibility given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to protect it and maintain it based on the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, we as Islamic students play a big role in succeeding this mission. Don't wait for Indonesia, because Indonesia has been waiting for you. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah di wakafah Wassalatu wassalamu ala sayyidil mustafa Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ahli sidki wal wafa Ila yaumil al-takul lahuniha Respect to the master of ceremony And honorable to the judges And my beloved audiences for the happiness In the name of Allah, the most gracious and most merciful Firstly Let's thank Allah who has given us a whole lot of comforts from the smallest to the biggest comfort every day, every hour, every minute, and every second in life. A divine gift of grace for each human in this world. Those comforts were fair and no difference between a small man, a big man, a weak man, a man than we can assemble in this great place and time. Secondly, let's send every peace and invocation to the most glorious prophet who had walked in the Holy Word for God. And he is the last returning by prophets in the world. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, a successful man in forming a complete character of human in this short time. As he said, "Inna lahu istu liutami mamakari malakhlaq." Ladies and gentlemen, as we know that environmental crisis is one of the problems we face in Indonesia, this country experienced the waste management emergency. Currently, Indonesia is the second largest waste products producers in the world before after the China. So, we have a lot of garbage and trash around the country in every provinces. Or maybe, if I'm talking about the country, we'll talk about the capital city. See, Jakarta produces about 7,500 tons of garbage every day. But its landfill only has a place to hold about 2,300 tons of it every day. See, this country has a garbage overload, trash everywhere. Or maybe, maybe it's too big to talk about the country, or to, or talk about the city. So I will talk about our environment. As sadly, our environment is Islamic boarding school. In my experience, before I was learning my boarding school, there are a lot of parents, my friends, prohibited their children to learn Islamic boarding school. With any reasons. But one of those reasons is, they say the Islamic boarding school is a dirty and disgusting place. Is that right? Of course not, I gotta say. See that, in fact, according to the data of the government, this country has more than 28,000 of Islamic boarding schools around the country. So, some of them have the program is Eco Friendly Psantra Program. This Eco Friendly Psantra is a program from Ministry of Religion or Fair 
and Ministry of Environmental and Forestry that combined with basic religion, cleanliness, education, and modern environmental knowledge. It's it's important for us. We need to we need to learn about it. So, if we want to change the side of people and the mind of people about the Islamic border school, we need to promote this program around the people. But how to promote them? First thing that we can do, we can promote it from an education. But first, we need to educate ourselves about it. We need to learn a lot of lessons about the, about the environment. Even really good teaching, like the words of God in the Holy Quran, A'udhu Billahi Bina Shaitan Al-Rahim, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Inna Allah Yuhibbun Tawabina Wa Yuhibbul Mutatakhirin. And the words of the Prophet Muhammad, Inna Allah Tawurun Wa Yuhibbul Mutatakhirin. Well, let's take the last word from these words. al mutakafiri See that scholars from a long time ago translated this word from a dip for different meanings to solve any different problems. And in the case, we want to take the meaning of holiness and cleanliness of environment itself for the case. If we educate ourselves, we can educate people about the importance of it, such as using a workshop. Workshop will expand to people's mind. Express the people knowledge about the importance of environment protection. Then we can promote it by practicing around the environment. According to the crisis that is happening in our country, we can start it from stop using plastics. See, plastic is the most dangerous garbage in the world. Can you see a landfill in Jakarta or a great plastic garbage island in the Pacific Ocean? It proves that. Plastics, it's difficult to be decomposed by a decomposition in the ground or in the water. So we need to stop using it, or at least we reduce it. Then maybe we can we can do reforestation, reforestation, or make a green open area. We plant trees and plants everywhere. Because trees produces an oxygen for any critters every day. Then maybe we can define the waste with an organic and inorganic waste. We can use an organic waste to make a compost for the plants and use an inorganic waste with a recycle to make any useful things. Then, another promotion in this program is an advertisement by using social media like YouTube or Instagram for Islamic Border School or mass media like banner, posters, newspaper or maybe we can advertise our Islamic Border School and the program of it with ourselves. When we are at home, we can teach everything and we practice everything we've learned in the Islamic Border School about the environment. So maybe the people will look at us and change their mind about the Islamic Border School. They will think that the Islamic Border School is the clean place and not the disgusting place. So we need to put in our head that Islamic Border School is not only an educational institution that it's do practice an educational, an educational activity. It is also creating a better social life and perform the program of eco-friendly suffering. We need to solve this, this crisis. This is one of the biggest crises of this country. We can start it from the smallest place around us. As an example, when you see a small trash or small grand bit in front of you, you should take it and throw it to the trash bin. Or if you don't find it, you can take it, put it in your pocket, and walk until you find a trash bin. Well, it sounds simple, but it's hard to do. I proved it, I knew it. But we need to try. We need to solve the crisis in this country. If you don't try, you need to think about it, imagine about it. Imagine living in the world with the trash around you. Imagine sleeping on the garbage bed. Imagine sleeping on the garbage bed. Imagine living in the trash, garbage, and drinking with the dirty water. It's really disgusting, right? It's really disgusting, of course. So, we need to solve this crisis, clean every condition, clean every environment around us. So, it will take us, so we will solve our crisis and clean our country. Maybe that's enough for me, if you will find mistakes, I apologize. I don't have a ton of it, because I'm just an ordinary person who doesn't escape mistakes. Thank you for your attention, wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.